You've never had popcorn like this before. For this recipe, you'll need aluminum foil. Tear off two pieces of the same size. Spread one piece on the counter, scatter the popcorn kernels on it, and place a good amount of butter on top. Season with salt to your taste. Cover with the second piece of foil, pressing the edges to seal it into an envelope. Poke a hole in the center with a long toothpick. Now, heat a skillet and place the packet of kernels, butter, and salt on it. The popcorn will cook on its own. Soon, you'll hear the familiar popping sound. Once it stops, remove the packet from the skillet immediately. Wait a moment, then cut open the foil packet. You'll instantly smell the buttery popcorn. This skillet method for making popcorn is easy, and the flavor has never been better. Stuff the popcorn into the blender. You haven't had popcorn done like this before. This quick and fun recipe involves putting popcorn in a blender. Then pour two cups of milk over it. The milk will greatly reduce the volume of the popcorn, so add in a bit more popcorn. After that, pour in the glass of milk again. Then blend the two ingredients. After a while, pause and add 60 grams of butter. Resume blending. When the popcorn is completely blended, pour the resulting mixture through a strainer. Make it immediately into the pan. Add one cup of sugar to the pan with the mixture in it. Also add one cup of powdered milk. Cook over low heat until the powdered milk and sugar dissolve. However, stir all the time as the mass can burn very quickly. Wait until the mixture cools down. After that, pour it into a bowl. Add the whipped cream spray to the bowl, the whole container. Take a mixer and whip the resulting paste for five minutes. When the whipping is done, pour it into a glass container. Put it in the freezer overnight. After this time, take it out of the refrigerator. Serve the delicious popcorn-flavored ice cream with waffles and your favorite fruit. Your family will go crazy over them. Combine milk with vinegar. There's no better way. The ingredient list is not long, and the preparation is also very simple, though it requires a bit of patience. Take a fairly large pot and pour one and a half liters of milk into it. Heat the milk until foam appears, then pour in apple cider vinegar or lemon juice. I use apple cider vinegar exactly three tablespoons. Stir and cook the liquid for another five minutes, then remove the pot from the heat. Transfer the formed cheese curds to a strainer suspended over a bowl and gently press out the excess liquid. Then place the cheese in a cloth or another natural fabric. Let the excess liquid drain. Put the cheese in the refrigerator to cool. It tastes much better when cold. Homemade cottage cheese is a great addition to sandwiches. Take your favorite bread, slice it, and spread the cheese on top. It tastes delicious. It's worth preparing for an important family breakfast or even for a meal during the regular week. I make pan-fried toast dumplings every weekend. No one can resist them. Start by preparing the base for the dumplings. To do this, remove the crust from each slice of toast using a cutter. Cut out a circle. Then, roll out each of these pieces into a thin sheet. Next, spread some tomato sauce on the bread. After that, add some grated cheese. Once each circle is filled, fold it in half, just like you would with regular dumplings. Seal it with a fork for a better effect. Of course, the work doesn't end here, because the dumplings still need to be breaded. To do this, take a bowl and add one egg and some milk. Mix thoroughly. Also, prepare some cornflakes. Pour them into a bowl and crush them. Take a dumpling and first coat it in the beaten egg and milk, then coat it on all sides with the crushed cornflakes. Finally, Fry the breaded dumplings on a well-heated and greased pan for a few minutes on each side. Serve the finished dumplings warm with your favorite sauce or dip. You can use them as an interesting snack or primarily eat them for breakfast. Thread the pasta on skewers. Such a meal no one will refuse. Cook penne pasta in salted water according to the instructions on the package. Then drain it and wait until it cools down. Now prepare a baking tray and line it with baking paper. 
Stuff the pasta on wooden skewers. Leave some free space at the ends. When the skewers are ready, place them on the paper-lined baking sheet. Then mix the ketchup in a small bowl with the mustard. Glaze the skewers with the mixture on the top. A silicone kitchen brush will be perfect for this purpose. Spread some grated cheese on top of greased pasta. Then arrange the sliced salami above. Top the pasta with sweet bell peppers as well. Now place the skewers in the oven. Preheated to 180 degrees Celsius. After about 20 minutes, you can take them out. Making this recipe costs peanuts, and anyone who tries it will certainly never forget it. Put pasta in the blender. You haven't had something like this before. The first step is to soak the spaghetti noodles. At first, however, break it in half so that it is easier to put it in the blender and in the pot. Pour some cold water over the pasta and keep it like this for an hour to soften. After this time, place the pasta in the blender. Add one egg, three tablespoons of sugar, and half a cup of milk. Blend everything until smooth. The mixture should be runny enough to pour into the pan, but not too liquid either. Before frying, spray the pan with a little oil and spread the evenly. Pour the batter into the pan in single batches and fry for about three minutes on each side over medium heat until golden. The pancakes are now ready, and their texture makes them melt in your mouth. You can serve the pancakes with maple syrup or dusted them with powdered sugar. These macaroni pancakes are very delicious and unique. Put the chocolate into boiling water. What you can do will surprise both you and your guests. It's a great trick for parties or decorating various sweets. First, take a pot and fill it with water. Boil it until it starts bubbling. When it does, drop in the whole chocolate bar. It's best to choose your favorite milk chocolate. While the chocolate is melting, prepare a bowl. Fill the bowl with cold water and add ice cubes. Using tongs, take the melted chocolate out of the pot. Cut off one corner of the chocolate with scissors, creating a small hole, Squeeze the chocolate through the hole directly into the bowl of ice water, forming any letters or patterns you like. Leave the writing in the ice until it hardens completely. Once it's hardened, it's ready. You can use this writing to decorate cakes, fruits, or simply eat it.